Welcome back, my Mad Cat friends, for another Wednesday Tuesday. Actually, I've turned this one into a peekaboo havesy, so, you know, sometimes you heat up unexpectedly. Right, ladies? Anyhow, today we're gonna discuss a very important topic. We're gonna start a three-part series on why can't Johnny swim? I'd like to introduce you here to little Johnny Tadpole. He's gonna help demonstrate for us why certain people struggle with swimming. Parents, please pay special attention because these are all skills that you can help your kids with at home. And if you're a non-swimmer, they'll work for you too. Okay folks, so we're gonna start out with priority one, floating. The concepts of floating will be learned way before the skill is actually achieved. It's our number one safety skill and our number one skill for confidence building and our number one most difficult skill to learn. So, little Johnny Tadpole here is afraid of the water and doesn't understand that he can float. He does not believe he will float. So we have to convince that part first. So the best thing you can do, is take a bowl of water, let him observe, show him any item that will float two thirds under, one third up, like ice cubes, right? Push down, let it come up, Push down again, let it come up. If Johnny Tadpole is willing, he is certainly able to do this too as well. And you say, okay, the reason this is floating is because it has air inside of it. And he's gonna look at you and you gotta say this a hundred times for it to really sink in. And you say, well, he's got air inside of him just like I have air inside of me. Everybody has air inside of them. And you get to choose how much air you put inside of you. So then you use different items, and you can take something that will sink, like a golf ball. You let them watch it sink. We don't want little Johnny Tadpole to be afraid of going underwater. So we don't talk about sinking as a bad thing. We let him have control, and control means you get to choose whether or not you float. So we let the golf ball go. It goes to the bottom and say, okay, that one didn't float because it doesn't have any air inside of it. Period, let that be the only reason so that he can create that concept in his mind that if I hold my air, I will float. If I let all my air go, it's gonna be a lot harder to float. So you take another item and you ask, did it float? The answer is yes. Well, why did it float? Until the answer comes out every time because it has air inside of it. Then another item. No, it didn't float, how come? Because it doesn't have any air inside of it. Remember, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate and true. You're trying to convince him to understand that it's possible for him to float. So, as you work with something like a bowl of water that lets little Johnny Tadpole feel like he's in control, it's a lot easier to learn the concepts here than to learn them in the swimming pool where he's trying to stand up, neck deep in the water, can't see where he's going because his face has to be up so high. That's why little guys, they like to climb back out, take a look at the pool from the top, and then they'll come back in. But you'll see them get out of the water quite often because they just need to be able to feel a little bit of control. So next we're gonna talk about three parts of body position that need to be learned for floating to even feel comfortable at all when you finally put little Johnny Tadpole in the big old swimming pool. First of all, when we lay down flat on our back, we're looking for a starfish position. And a starfish position would be just like a starfish in the water. This is gonna give him his best ability to float. We're gonna talk about the face first. If the face and head, if everything is lined up like on a flat surface, the mouth is very close to the water. So instead, we want this head to be able to act as if it's hanging off the entire back of the head in the water. The ears should be covered with water and only the forehead and chin and nose, that whole part of the face should be upright. And that's what's gonna allow you to breathe and see where you are. The chest will also be propped up and the hip flexors, that's the hardest part, they like to pike this way. You'll see most children seated in the water and any beginner swimmer that really doesn't trust the water. Stretching those hip flexors out, the hardest finishing skill because the fetal position is so instinctive when we don't feel safe. 
very hard to stretch out and make yourself vulnerable when you're trying to feel safe, okay? It is a learned skill, it is not a natural skill. So sometimes we show the pictures of old Snoopy laying on a ball. That was a great mental picture for me when I was a kid. And what that would do to your shoulders, your hip flexors, your head, everything, nice and round at the back, as opposed to laying on the ball on your tummy, which would make everything round in front. And interestingly enough, when you put a child in the water, when they lay on their back, they like to curl up as if they're on their tummy. And when they're on their tummy, they arch out as if they're on their back. So we just have to get the opposite to happen. One of the reasons it can be difficult to maintain a good position in the water for a long period of time, when those ears get covered with water, if you're not used to it, you don't know what to expect, the world suddenly and then all of a sudden it comes back and then it, and then it all of a sudden comes back. If the kid's not ready for this, they're gonna panic the moment that water starts going in their ears. It can tickle, it can be irritating. Some kids have to start out closing their ears and laying their head back to float. Or earplugs, they work great because then there is no change when you're up versus back. Now let's talk about full body position. It is not necessary for the feet to float. There's no air in these feet. We only need the face to float. So I always make sure my swimmers know that they can just stand up in the water and start looking back and they are gonna end up floating as soon as that face is finally back far enough. Parents, I want you to give support right here behind the neck. If the head is not far enough back, you should not be able to help pull them. It should slide right off. So you encourage them to pinch right here by looking up enough. Now you can help draw them through the water. So the face is up, chest is up, and as you start to draw them backward, they'll realize, oh, look at that, the legs start to float a little bit, but we're not looking for this. So I encourage them, feet down, chest up. Feet down, chest up. You just keep repeating it, they'll finally get it. At first, you're gonna see a lot of hiccups in the water because it's really hard to get all of that to work together. Get creative. You can use a bathtub, and in the bathtub, you can make sure that there's contact with only enough water to cover the ears and practice those positions. When you put the chin up and you push those feet down, bottom should not be touching bottom. And that's how you know you got it. It can just be part of what you do. Okay, parents, that's your basics on back floating. So be sure to watch ahead for parts two and parts three of this swim series. And until then, you've got a little homework to do. Coach Mad Cat, signing off.